parents and uh, for <laughs> he's with his grandparents and I don't know he was there for over a Sunday so he came back home and he said mom dad can we sing the sucker face song <laughs> so Debbie calls her parents and said what are you teaching our child what kind of song is that sucker face song we, we I don't know what you're talking about oh we bring sacrifice and praise <laughs> Uh, I want to bring a short word to you today. We want to honor the graduates that are here. Also, we have four people getting baptized. And so what an exciting day that we have. But I just wanted to share some thoughts about three great events. There are three great events that await you in your life. And so that's what I want to talk about this morning. Children's Church can be dismissed. You can go with Anna. If you want to come back, bring them back for the baptisms. That's fine, too. We'll give you a heads up there. So it'll be a little while before we get to that. And if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. And would you stand, please? We'll give reverence to God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Just a short little verse here. Short phrase, one sentence. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. By one spirit, all of us baptized into one body. That, of course, is the body of Christ. Father, we thank you for the great privilege of being a Christian. Thank you for the great privilege of being carriers of your Holy Spirit, baptized together as members of the body of Christ. Well, Lord, we know that's just the beginning. You have so much more for us in the Christian life, and we ask that you would speak to our hearts through this message today. Lord, and if there's any that have not followed you in an act of obedience or come to a place in their life where they've surrendered to you, that they would do that today. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So this is also Pentecost Sunday, so we're, we're cramming a lot of things in here uh, today. I'll probably preach on Pentecost to give it uh, its due uh, later on. But uh, there's three great events that Christians or people are, should experience as far as the Christian life goes. The first one is the baptism into one body. In other words, that's salvation or regeneration, being born again, being born anew. And the gospel is clear. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. You must be born again of the Spirit of God. And then in, as we read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. That's how we are born again when we become new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. In John chapter 20, after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples and he breathed on them. And he said, receive the spirit Receive the Spirit. That is regeneration. That is new life that was breathed into them. They became new creations. So that's the first great event that needs to take place in your life. You need to be baptized into the body of Christ. You need to have salvation. You need to be born again. You need to be regenerated. And if you haven't done that, that's where you need to begin. That's where the Christian life starts. That's where it all begins. And then there's also another great event that takes place in the life of the believer, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a work that is separate and distinct from the regenerating work. To be regenerated by the Holy Spirit is one thing. To be baptized with the Holy Spirit is something different. It is something further. It is uh, evident when Jesus said, you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit 
not many days from now in Acts chapter 1 and verse 5. So they were not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they had already been regenerated. They had already been born again. The Spirit had breathed on them. Now I would submit to you the fact that so seven weeks earlier they had received the Holy Spirit as a subsequent or a different experience than the, uh, the subsequent act in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 where they were filled with the Spirit or where they were baptized in the Spirit. Two distinct events. It would be foolish to say that the same people who received the Spirit seven weeks earlier were just repeating that conversion experience in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. No, it was a, it was a separate, entirely different, new experience for them. So the conclusion is that when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, yes, he does indwell in us. John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus said to them, as he breathed upon them, receive the Holy Spirit. So that's the initial experience that they had. But these same people are filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. So what Jesus was doing in, in John chapter 20 He's really reenacting creation. When God bent over the lifeless uh, Adam and he breathed into him the breath of life. Now Christ, the second Adam, is taking his immortal life and he's given to his disciples his life breathing spirit. It is for their benefit of their resurrected body and breathing symbolically into his disciples. They had Adam's nature, but now they are become partakers of God's nature. And he's, Jesus is saying to them, now because you have faith, because you believe in me, I now breathe into you eternal life. And any person who confesses that Jesus Christ is, is their savior, in that act of confession, a conversion takes place and they receive the Spirit at that time. But in the being filled with the Spirit or being baptized into the Spirit, synonymous terms, there's an element of being placed in the life of the Holy Spirit. So when you are saved, you are placed in the body of Christ. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are placed in the Holy Spirit, the element of the Holy Spirit. And something miraculous takes place. There's a new dimension of the Spirit's work in you that takes place upon this earth. So these three great events. The first event is baptism into the body of Christ. That's salvation. That's regeneration, born again, whatever you want to call it. The second work is the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the filling of the Holy Spirit where now the Spirit flows out of you in dynamic ways. At salvation, he comes in. At the baptism, he come, he, you are so full that he comes out. He spills out uh, into the world around you. But then the third great event is water baptism. And why Jesus was baptized has a lot to do with why you should be baptized. Because baptism means identification. When Jesus was baptized, he was identifying with us. When we are baptized, we are identifying with him. We identify ourselves with him. And this very, there's this very real sense that we meet Jesus in the waters of baptism. When we baptize people today, it is not some, some tradition that we're doing. It's not something that we just, we just go through the motions with. There has a deep meaning. Jesus identified with us. You see, Jesus came to do what we couldn't do. Jesus came as our substitute. He came to take our place. And you see, we all had a debt on us. We had a debt of sin that we could not pay. And when Jesus was baptized, Jesus was signing his name to our debt. And he was saying, I will pay this debt in full. I am identifying myself with these people that I have come to save. I'm not a sinner, but I'm identifying myself with these people. And so he shows us a picture in his baptism of how 
he is going to save us. It was a picture of the coming death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, why are we baptized? Well, Jesus identified himself with us by baptism, and we identify ourselves with the Lord Jesus through baptism as well. Let me show you why. Let me show you why we believe and we teach in this church that baptism is by immersion. It is all because of what baptism pictures. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And then he says, Know you not. Please pay attention here. Know you not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness, the likeness, the picture of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. So here it is. What does baptism picture? When you understand what baptism pictures, you will understand why it needs to be by immersion. The first thing that baptism pictures is Christ's sacrifice. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 37, they said to Jesus, a couple of his disciples, grant us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. Here's Jesus' answer to them. Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink? And be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized. See, the real baptism of Jesus is a baptism about his death. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 50, he's talking about the cross. And he said, but I have a baptism to be baptized with and how pressed I am until it is accomplished. Immersed in judgment, Jesus' baptism was a pre-enactment of what he did on the cross. So it pictures his sacrifice in verse 12, uh, of there of Romans chapter, or verse 5 of Romans chapter 6. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So Paul says very, very plainly there, baptism is the likeness of his death and, and number two, it is the likeness of his resurrection. The likeness of his death and the likeness of his resurrection. So that baptistry or any place where a person goes under the water pictures a death and a burial. When a person goes under the water, that pictures the death. When the person comes up out of the water, it pictures the resurrection. It's the likeness of his death. It is the likeness of his resurrection. It's a picture of that. Now, pictures are important, right? Um, I like to give this one. Suppose you've never seen a picture of my wife. My wife, Debbie, and you say to me, Pastor, do you have a picture of your wife? And I say, I sure do. And I preach in my wallet, and I pull out this beautiful picture of a waterfall. <laughs> and you say, wow. You have a strange wife. You married a waterfall. That's not so far out today, folks. <laughs> I mean, in Europe, there was a person who married a bridge. So, I mean. But if I have a picture of something, don't you think that picture should at least resemble what I am talking about? If I have a picture of my wife, I should have a picture that at least resembles her. So 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, 
how Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he died, he was buried, he rose again. Now, if there is any picture that God wants to keep out of the church, what do you think it would be? I think it would be a picture of the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is why every time somebody gets saved and they get baptized, they show us over and over again what the gospel is and what Jesus did for them. They are showing through the picture of baptism the likeness of his death and the likeness of his resurrection. Baptism also pictures my salvation. You think about this, both baptism and salvation is done by somebody else. We can't justify or baptize ourselves. But you see, when, when Jesus died, his death had my name on it. When he died, he died for me. He died for you. But when he rose, I rose with him. And so did you if you were a believer. So that's what baptism means. It pictures his sacrifice and then it pictures my salvation because I am saved through his sacrifice. Because I have identified with him and his work on the cross. And what Jesus was saying when he got baptized was, I'm going to show you through baptism what I am eventually going to do to take away your sins. How, how I will become your sacrifice. And then verse 4 there in Romans chapter 6, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. There's something powerful about baptism. We become new creations when we are born again. But there is something about baptism that as we come out of the water, that we are to walk in newness of life. We are to walk now as a new creation. I believe there is a power in baptism that as we are buried in the waters of baptism, we can say our sin was buried there. And I've raised now to walk in newness of life. And there are times in my life when I'm tempted, and you know what I do? I look back to my baptism when I was 12 years old. And I think, you know what? I don't need to sin. I was buried. I died to myself in the waters of baptism. And I came out of the water to walk in newness of life. I'm a new creation. I have a new ability to overcome sin in my life. And I can identify with what Jesus did for me. When he was buried, I was buried. When he arose, I arose. I'm buried with Christ. I'm risen with Christ. Now it also says I'm going to rise at the resurrection when the body and the soul are reunited. So when I look at the baptismal tank, it also gives me faith in a future resurrection because Jesus rose from the dead and conquered death in the grave. And he rose again. And he has just become the first fruits of all those who believe in him that they will have their own resurrection. So someday you are going to hear that I died. Don't you believe it? This body might die, but I'm not going to die. The real me will live because my faith and my trust is in Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Now someday, yes, that body will rise to meet my spirit which is eternal when you trusted Christ as your savior you got eternal life right the wages of sin of death but the gift of God is what eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord you have eternal life right now your spirit is eternal the soul that God gave you is eternal these bodies are not they're going to wear out if you haven't noticed, it probably is already. <laughs> but someday when that body goes into the ground, 
that really is not the end either because the body and soul will be reunited and someday we'll have these glorified bodies with no pain, no suffering, but we'll be in the presence of Christ. So, you know, people say, talk about a profession of faith. I think the greatest way to profess your faith is through baptism. Yeah, you can come to the front, you can tell people you put your faith, your trust in Jesus, and that's great. But to me, the greatest profession of faith is baptism because you are showing the gospel. And you are showing that you have died with Christ, but you are being raised to walk in a new way. You're being raised to walk in newness of life. Somebody said um, that we are to preach the gospel and use words if necessary. The greatest way to preach the gospel is through the life that we live. And every time somebody's getting baptized this morning, the gospel is being preached again. It's going to happen four times here today. Again, 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 and again. Every time the gospel is going to be preached. Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again. That's the gospel. I identify with him. I make this public confession that when Jesus died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. But when he rose, I rose with him. Somebody else said, your, your, how's the, let me get this straight. Your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. <laughs> your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Some people are going to speak loudly today uh, through baptism. So it's a way of saying, I have decided to follow Jesus. And that's what these four have done. Three great events in your life. Have you experienced them all? Have you experienced regeneration? Being been baptized into the body of Christ, salvation? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Just like when you were saved, you were placed into Christ's body. When you are being baptized in water, you're being placed in water. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is you are being placed, you are being immersed in the Holy Spirit. Three separate events in the life of a Christian that I hope and pray that every single one of you uh, experiences. All right. Let me uh, ask for the graduates. Could you guys come up here? And uh, Pastor Josh. Brendan and Joseph are the only two that I know about. Do we have any others? Other than Sarah Hank, who uh, is not able to be here today. Those are the only three that I know of. Don't be shy if there's somebody else. And um, I'm going to ask Pastor Josh to lay hands on you and pray for you. And if you guys wouldn't mind stretching your hands toward them and praying uh, as, as Pastor Josh prays for them, let's ask God to be with them in their future lives and whatever that might be. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these two young men uh, that you have raised up. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for their commitment to you already. They're so far ahead in life um, already, just having a solid relationship with Jesus as your Savior. Lord, I thank you for their examples that they already uh, leave. Yes, Lord. And their desire to follow you. Granted, Jesus. And Lord, I just pray now as they graduate this year, as they go forward in their lives, there's, there's going to be lots of things happening and lots of things changing. Lord, I, I pray very specifically that the path before them would be illuminated with your Holy Spirit in the way that they should go. Your word, Lord, says that the, the path shines brighter and brighter until that perfect day. And so, Lord, I pray that no matter... Uh, what obstacles may come across their life, no matter what the enemy throws at them, that they will know the direction that you've called them to go. That it will be made clear that they'll see the path before them, Lord, that you have chosen, that you've laid out for them. Uh, as they um, choose schooling, further education, careers, uh, marriages, families, Lord, I just pray that everything would be laid out plain before them, that you would direct their steps and that they would continue to glorify you and honor you and exalt you in everything that they do. 
Yes, Lord. And that their lives would just be wonderful testimonies to the, to the people on their own, especially to the young boys that look up to these two guys. Yes, Lord. Lord. I just pray your blessing upon them. Bless them with your presence and your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Have a gift for you guys. And then we also have a cake. So after the service is dismissed this morning, you're all invited down to the fellowship hall. Uh, make sure you can stay with us if at all possible. And you guys get a picture of the cake before it's cut with you. And let them and their families go through line first. And I know that's going to be hard for both of your families because they, they like to put other people first. But you guys get to the head of the line today. So let's, let's give them a hand of applause and honor them today. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Bless you. Good job, guys. Thanks. You can go sit down. All right, I'm going to give you some announcements. Some other people have some announcements here this morning. Um, Again, the fellowship dinner, hope that you can stay in fellowship with us. That would be great. Uh, Wednesday evening, there's an adult Bible study only. We're studying chapter 3. We're going to study the whole chapter 3 of Daniel. It's a very familiar chapter, but if you want to just read through it, remind yourself of, um, of the, what's going on there, that would be great. I'm not going to read that chapter this Wednesday on the outside. We will talk about verses as we go through it. You know the story so well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace that I think we can get to some of the, the application in, in that uh, rather than just rehearse all that story. And then um, we're having a family cookout and softball game at Wilson Park on noon Saturday, January 18th. That's where we usually have a cookout for Father's Day. June. <laughs> June. I'm trying to hurry, but thank you. <laughs> so bring food to cook, dishes to pass, dish, dishes to pass, something in them. Make sure there's something in them. Softball gear. <laughs> Come for a family fun event. All right. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, this is not in your bulletin, but Teresa Romo will be doing nature walks throughout the summer and into the fall. And uh, she will show you what is edible and some medicinals. It's uh, not only a fun way to learn, but it could be a blessing for the future. Uh, so you can call her to schedule your walk. She also has a country retreat, retreat home. She has cards on that, I don't know what you call those tables out there with the, with the purple books as well. Uh, so uh, if you, it's something you're interested in, you can take that. She's generously offered that. And then also there are some cards out there uh, for some, some tickets for the circus. Um, children can get in free to the circus with a ticket with a, the uh, paid admission of an adult. So there are dates and times and things on those tickets. That's also on that little funky table out there uh, if you want to help yourself to that. And then, um, let's see, Christine, you want to come? She's going to share her testimony before she gets into the water. And then I'm going to get changed here and then um, a few baptismal candidates you want to come and sit in the front row here at this time and then when she's done Cindy has an announcement for a women's uh, event coming up at church and then um, Jason has an announcement for the books and, and Jen has an announcement for VBS so I'll let you do that here's a microphone right here you'll be time when you're done to get changed okay.